Hi, my name's Leanne Cho, and I am a picture book illustrator who lives in Brooklyn, New York. I have illustrated these three books that are currently out, and I'm working on three more. And so since I'm in New York and COVID is hitting us pretty damn hard and I'm stuck inside all day, I figured that I would go through some of the sketchbooks and give you guys a sketchbook tour. So these are the sketchbooks that I worked on when I was working on the first two books of mine. So these two. And so these sketchbooks are really, really cheap Muji sketchbooks. Um, they go for like $1.50 each and they surprisingly hold like ink and watercolor and everything really well, despite how cheap they are. And I love them because I can just like have a lot of fun, like mess around and like just make an absolute mess inside. And it doesn't freaking matter because it costs $1.50. So first we have this book. And so this sketchbook I was working on in 2018, I think when I was still in college. So I went to SVA, I graduated in 2019, which is right before the pandemic hit. And in 2018, I was my senior year, I was working on my own story for a children's book class. And here are some of the designs. So the story was called Little Plum and the Closet. And here's Little Plum. And it's about Little Plum who moves to a new house. And she has to deal with the scary sounds coming out of her closet. But instead of being scared, she goes inside and she investigates and she ends up finding this weird creature who's also lonely like her. And then they become best friends. And then there's also like sheep involved because she can't sleep, so she's counting sheep. And here are some very cute sheep designs. And then here are some early designs for the monster. Uh, the final monster ended up looking like this. But early designs had the monster with the coat hanger because I was like, oh, you know, the monster lives inside the closet. Like it might be funny if he, he incorporates a coat hanger of some kind. Um, and then working on more sketches, developing the character Little Plum. Um, I ended up changing her hair because she looks like a little grandma here. <laughs> but these sketches are done in ballpoint pen. And these ones are done in color pencil. And here I was figuring out her closet and I thought it would be so freaking cute if she used the little drawers as steps to go into her closet. So she kind of ends up going into the closet and she discovers a new world where the monster lives. So you can see her peeking into the closet. And then I was working out uh, designs for the monster and I knew that I wanted um, the monster to be wearing something and I was like, maybe a scarf. I wanted to imply movement in the monster somehow. Um, and I ended up going with a cape, I think. So here you can see him with a cape and this is color pencil. I just like using the Prismacolor color pencils and here she is, little plum and her little tiny feet and her little, little legs. And here is more figuring out um, how I want her to look. Look, it says less grandma -y. And then I was trying out different hairstyles for her to try to see what um, I liked. I ended up going with like a very big floof in the end. Um, I remember my professor at the time seeing this and he was like, oh, it's probably a bit much. Like this hair is probably a bit much. Like you should probably dial it back a little bit. So it ended up being dialed back, but I still like these sketches. Like she's adorable, look at her. And here's the monster waiting, uh, hiding inside the closet. You can see him right here. And at one point he had a tie on. And these are done in ink and with a fountain pen, I think. And here is a sketch, an early sketch that ended up turning into a development piece, which is here. And it kind of shows the different size difference between the two. And since the story was her moving, I had fun drawing just some moving boxes and everything. I just like the way these look. I don't think this even made it into the final art. Um, here she is in her tiny chair. And I decided to make her room like a little attic. Because I thought that would be really cute. It's a little like um, Gravity Falls like, I realize now. And I love Gravity Falls, so that's probably why. Where that comes from. And then her room ends up being featured in one of the final pieces. Um, 
And here I was figuring out, um, so she goes into the closet and how the closet would then transform into this magical world. And we have all the different clothes hanging, all the moving boxes that then transform into branches where the monster lives and the monster hides in. And these are just some notes. And I was figuring out, um, I thought it would be really cute if the trees in this like magical closet world were uh, coat hangers. So then these ended up making it into the final um, painting. Here's one of the development pieces I did. This is in watercolor, color pencil, and I think there's a little bit of gouache, but you can see the coat hanger trees. And then the final piece ended up looking like this. And here are just some more sketches for the composition of pages. Um, some different closet animals. We've got a sock snake, um, a cap turtle, dress owl, um, a heron hanger, which didn't really work out, or a bow butterfly. Um, and here's a composition that ended up making it into the final. And there's this piece, which I honestly don't know if I still like. I kind of don't like this project anymore, but I feel like I just end up hating everything I make. Um, and I think that's just the general cycle of things that is for me. I'm just super self-critical. But anyways, here's another composition piece of the different sheep climbing over, flying over the town. And just some notes. And then these are just some loose sketches I did in Posca with these Posca markers. Like I had wanted Posca markers for the longest time, but I thought that they were so expensive, so I never bought them. And then these were on sale one day at Blick Art Materials, and I was like, okay, I'll get them because they're on sale, but they only had colors that I didn't like left. So I got them, and I tried using them, and it turns out I hate them because I don't like the color of them. So my lesson learned is that I should just buy the thing that I like, even if it costs a little bit more. But anyways, now we're getting into development for my first picture book, which is The Oboe Goes Boom Boom Boom. It's written by Colleen A.F. Venable, and it's illustrated by me. And so this book tells the story of a little girl, Felicity, who, who keeps interrupting the band director. Every time the band director is introducing the kids to a different instrument, like the clarinet, then he's being interrupted by Felicity, who's booming on her drum. And so it's, it's very, it's sort of nonfiction, but also with a story, which is very interesting, which is what I really liked about this book. Um, and also just that the characters are really fun. And so I was trying to figure out the how I wanted to do the lettering for this book because I knew that I wanted to do really fun, hand-lettered like sounds and everything. It wasn't an animation, it wasn't like an audiobook, so I really had to focus on how to visualize sound. So then I was looking at different artists in the past. I was looking at a lot of um, Dada artists and designers and the ways that they handle type. So like you could hear, you could see here Fernand Ledger, Marinetti, and I was just copying a lot of their their type organizations and designs. Here's some more. I found that it's when you're working on when I've been working on lettering or type that it's been a lot easier to just copy um, other people's types and letterings to kind of study them and see how they work and then apply those same principles to create my own type. And so here's some more, and this is just done with um, a brush, an ink, Sumi ink, I think. And here, like it says Dada, this is all from like um, Dada, Dadaists. And they did a lot of like mixing of uh, type, which I really liked. I feel like it really reads in that way then. And there's different sizes and it's all over the place. So for the booms, I started to experiment with different booms. Um, here, this is like a cutout. I like painted just cheap gouache over some card that I had and then I cut it out, but that took way too long and I'm really lazy as we're gonna find out. Um, here I was looking at different letterpress uh, fonts and types and I found this book, which is Alan Kitching's A to Z of Letterpress. And it's essentially a big alphabet of different uh, letters and designs of letterpress keys that they had. And so I used that um, a lot to inspire me for using the type in the Boom 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 book. It's also just a very nice book. Like it's very nicely made. And 
And here is one of the early explorations for this book. So I knew I wanted to do this book digitally and I ended up doing it um, mainly in Procreate, um, but I still wanted to do a lot of actual textures of real paintings and like cutouts like this. So it kind of ended up being a digital collage. And so this paper, this is cut up composition paper from a Mozart composition book. And I remember I went to the Strand and I was trying to look for composition books, but they have a very, very small <laughs> music section. Um, the Strand is a secondhand and like new bookstore in New York. And I went in and they didn't really have a lot of composition books. And so I bought a couple that were really expensive, but they were new and I wanted to find old ones so they'd look a little better. Um, then I went outside and I decided to try their secondhand book section, which is outside of their um, their building. And it's a lot of $1, $2 books and everything's just disorganized. You just kind of look and try to find what you can. And I was like, I'll just spend like five minutes looking. And when I went and started flipping through, I didn't find anything. But as I was about to leave, I look at the windowsill and on the windowsill is sitting the Mozart composition book, like an old tattered secondhand vintage style and it was falling apart. And I guess someone had grabbed it and decided they didn't want it and left it there. But I was like, oh my God, perfect. And it cost like $2. And I pretty much used that book for the entire collages for this book. Like here, I would paint over the different pages with a light wash of watercolor and cut them out or tear it out. And for example, that became the case cover for this book. So when you remove the jacket, here's the case cover and it wrapped around the whole book. And so that book actually ended up doing a lot. I tried to look for it for this video, but I couldn't find it. Um, but anyway, so here she is. Here's all the different type that I first started out with. Um, and then I was looking at different um, symbols in composition and for the different beats, these are the drum beats. And then these are just different cutouts. I was trying to like think of how I would represent music and drumming and booming. So these are cutouts um, of painted gouache papers that I just glued in. And then here I was experimenting with the type. So I knew I wanted the type to look like this and I tried, these are lino cuts. So lino cut is um, lin linoleum, I can never say it, linoleum. And it's like a rubber kind of material and then you carve into it and you essentially make a stamp. So I carved all of these letters out to make these stamps. And after I did it, I was like, oh my God, I never want to do that again because it took so long. But I love the way that it looked, especially in these pages with overlaid with all the sounds. So I wanted to, it to look like that in the final book. But because I am so incredibly lazy, um, I ended up actually doing it digitally. But because I had done all of this, I actually got to look at how the stamp interacts and then it made it easier for me to recreate that texture. So all of this is actually digital, but when I've told people they haven't really been able to tell the difference and they think that it's real. Um, but I definitely like to work smart and not hard. So this is the final like look of the booms that I ended up going with. And I really like it. I think it's very stark and it's very strong. And please ignore, <laughs> that's my dinner order for me and my partner. And so here I was figuring out how the valves work on the trumpet. And I actually played the trumpet for like six years when I was a kid and I was not very good. Definitely no like Louis Armstrong. Uh, so I had to figure out <laughs> how the air works, the airflow works, because in the book, one of the pages is describing how the airflow works in a trumpet. And I mean, I still kind of, it took me a long time to wrap my head around those. So essentially the valves, like you push them down and then they open up in different areas and then the air flows through. And then you end up getting higher or lower notes depending on how you push the valves and the coordination that, the coordination, like the, 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 the way that they align with each other. But anyways, so there's the trumpet, some more trumpet. This is more trumpet. I mean, I held it for like six years, but I still don't really understand how the tubes work. <laughs> um, then over here, I started figuring out some of the composition for the pages. 
I ended up doing this book, I also sketched it in Procreate because it's just easier, um, but I still liked doing some traditional sketches, thumbnailing, so that I had an idea. Oh, and then now we're heading into my second book. It began with Lemonade. So this book came out in 2021. Um, the Obu book came out in 2020. And this book uh, is written by Gideon Stirrer. And it talks, well, talks, it tells the story of a little girl who decides to sell lemonade. So she gets her dad to, to fix her up a lemonade cart. She rolls it outside, but she finds that everyone has already taken up the, I guess the sidewalk space. And then she ends up rolling it away. And then the, the cart rolls away on its own and she ends up chasing it all the way to a riverside. And then at the riverside, she starts to get a whole host of like crazy critters and creatures come and visit her. And so this is how the final book looked. And so when I first started, obviously I had to figure out how I wanted the lemonade stand to look. So I went on Google and Google doesn't really have a lot of good images a lot of the time. So I went onto Pinterest, which I don't like, but honestly, they always have the best images. Like their images are always so aesthetic and curated and everyone just, everyone has a, such a good design sense. So I went on Pinterest, even though oh, I hate Pinterest, um, even though I don't like it, but there were so many good um, parents who were posting like these very excessive lemonade stands that they had made for their kids. Like some had like compartments underneath and everything, or they were made out of crates and all, and they had all these carts. It was crazy. And then some were just regular with like, um, like a little little table with like gingham cloth over it. But so then I did little sketches. These are all done with uh, Prismacolor color pencils. I don't really like sketching in pencil because I find that I always smudge it and I'm like a weird perfectionist and I don't, I really don't like smudging. Um, so I end up sketching usually in like color pencils, like these are Prismacolors or I just sketch in ink in pen because usually I don't erase anyways because it's fine, it's my sketchbook, I can make mistakes. And here I'm starting to figure out the main character. So she looks so pretty different in the final. Her clothing stays about the same, but her face keeps changing and I couldn't figure out her proportions for the longest time. And so the final, I knew I wanted her cart to have a big lemon on it. And we ended up, well, I ended up settling on having the cart be a half lemon with sunglasses and she's named her uh, lemonade stand Cool Lemonade because <laughs> The lemon's wearing sunglasses, so he's really cool. And and it's hot out and the lemonade is cool and it's cool. So I I don't know if anyone got that joke, but I thought it was really funny when I came up with it. So it's in here. And so in the story, the cart rolls away, right? Um, but one of my early ideas was what if the cart grew legs and ran away? <laughs> And so I just wanted to explain that because you're gonna see a lot of uh, drawings of the cart with actual legs and it might be really confusing. Um, and I thought it was really funny, but it ended up not working out because we just had a lot of questions like, are, does it look like that's her legs? Like what color would we color the legs? Like, does it look too human? Um, are there too many questions? Is it too weird? So we ended up going back to the wheels, but there are a lot of uh, drawings of just this lemonade cart with legs. So here she is being chased by it. Here she is chasing it. But something that did stay is the cart. Um, the expression actually changes throughout the book. Um, as some people have noticed, um, it'll react to things. So it's, it's not just an actual cart. It's kind of personified. Um, and here she is. Look at her with her little red sunglasses, her lemon wedge apron, lemons. Here she is. Yeah, it just like, it looks like her legs. So I think we decided that that probably wasn't a good call. And so in the book, there's, she goes to the riverside. So there's a lot of boats that um, all these different creatures come on. So I had to learn how to draw boats because the boat that I can draw from memory is the one that I've known how to draw from memory when I was five. So I had to look up a lot of images of boats. And so here are a lot of studies. These are, I think, done in fine liner with watercolor. So I think I was using like, maybe uni these uni pen fine liners, but I think this was 0.3. 
um because they're a little thicker i don't really use fine liners anymore um i just use fountain pens now but this is this is what i used before and in terms of watercolor i was using um this set which is my holbin a Holbin watercolors and the case I got from Amazon Ugh, I know um, but the paint itself I filled with um, Holbin gouache uh, I mean not Holbin gouache Holbin watercolor and Holbin is a is a Japanese brand and they're really pricey but their tubes last me like four or five years and I paint books with them and they still haven't run out so I, it's worth it in my opinion but anyways here are some designs for sailors um, an old fisherman actually comes by that you see in the book and at first I was like ooh, what if we make it like an old fisher woman because we don't see a lot of those and I remember going on a google and looking up like fisher woman or like sailor woman and all there was was just like sexual Halloween costumes like nothing at all and obviously not the same if you looked up for a sailor man and I was like I was just really shocked that I couldn't find anything at all. Like everything was sexual. Um, but I, it ended up being a man anyways, because the text actually said the old man. And I didn't realize um, after I'd done all this like research. So here I'm figuring out um, the type for this book. Um, I knew I wanted to hand letter the parts where she's yelling um, and some of the text in this book. So I'm just figuring out her little different letterings. I couldn't figure out how I wanted to do her nose. Like, that's why she has this weird, like, W nose to begin with, because it was fun to draw, but I don't know if I like the look of it. It actually kind of reminds me of, um, of, uh, the person who, the illustrator who did, uh, Roald Dahl's books, and I suddenly just blanked on his name. Blake something? But anyways, that's the first sketchbook, but it continues on to the next sketchbook. All of the stuff I did for Lemonade. So this sketchbook was, here we go, March 2019 to August 2019. And there are those damn freaking Posca markers again that I hate. I'm trying to use them, but I just don't like them. Uh, this is a, oh, this is a loose sketch of like the Hudson, the Hudson area, because the author is from upstate New York. So he wanted the, the river to kind of be set around the Hudson River. So I was doing a lot of research around there. Um, some more lemonade stands that I found on Pinterest and some cool glasses I saw at like Target. And then over here, I did not come up with this by myself. I also copied this. Um, like I said, I copy a lot of text, but just, just in my sketchbook, like when it comes to the actual books, like I, I make it up myself. Um, but it's a, it's a great way to learn how, how other people design text. And so here, because there was just a whole host of different creatures that come and buy lemonade from our main character, I came up with this huge list. I like asked friends as well, like, and I came up with this huge list of uh, characters that could could come on their boats. So what we've got like different floaties, flamingos, lifeguard, rat on a raft that didn't make it in, rubber dinghy, squirrel, porcupine. Uh, lion with lemonade, those made it in. Crocodile trying to sip lemonade. Giraffe with a long straw, which I'm looking at now and that would have been so funny, but I forgot to put it in. A frog boat, that made it in. Uh, tattooed pirates, I think that made it in. Um, seals, Loch Ness Monster, birds, a submarine, massive octopus, uh, pigs, pig tower. A uh, snake with a bendy straw, mermaids, um, weird people, just weird people, a uh, bug in a paper boat, and oh, four elephants, a turtle carrying people. And so that's that's the list, and some of them made it in and some of them didn't. And here are some more boats. So I remember going to the SVA library for these. This was uh, summer after I graduated. And SVA has like this visual library where you can just look up subjects and they have weird magazine clippings of everything. So I think these boats were from there. And once again, this is just fine liner and watercolor. And then here are some pictures. Here's some fun pictures. I mean, I don't, I think I ended up just going with a regular picture in my head, but I still, I love this picture. Like this is a really nice picture. And some of the, some of them ended up in the book especially on this page. So I, I love her. Like she is iconic, this iconic girl. 
look at her with her huge like jug and a huge lemon that kind of doesn't make sense but there's her big lemon juice lemonade and it's being squirted out with a hose like visionary like she made this herself because she's a little inventor i mean their setups are like more regular um she's she's kind of rocking it because she's got she's got the whole like digital like light setup and everything um so i kind of modeled this spread after um how night markets are in taiwan um so i'm from taiwan and night markets are a huge part of our culture and usually it's it is like the sidewalk just filled to the broom with different stands trying to sell things to you and like for example there's this guy this poor guy who's in his lemon costume sweating it out it's a hot day he's sweating it out in his lemon costume trying to sell lemonade like if he falls over he's done he can't get back up like he's good but anyways okay and then so now now that this book is out and uh that I, I've gone paid, like this book is in the stores, people have bought it, people love it. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, in my eyes, a success. Um, I can think I can admit that I did not know how to draw animals when I signed on to this book. Um, I just like was never an animal person. Like I grew up really interested in um, animations that were centered around people um although spirit i loved spirit like spirit will forever be a great movie and like that horse is really hot but anyways i didn't know how to draw animals um but i i may have told them that i did know how to draw animals so i was like okay i really have to learn now and it kind of forced myself to actually learn how to draw animals and now i can draw them to an extent um i still struggle with cats for some reason they're just like weird their shoulders work weird but anyways, here are some sketches of animals. Here are some bears. Here's like the chubbiest bear ever. And he's so freaking cute. We have a baby hippo and an otter. There's the bear claws. Mama hippo, big hippo. Squirrels that I still don't really know how to draw. Here we go, Pascas, Pascas, I keep missing the Pascas. And here she is, she's still got her own nose. And then this, this is an interlude. This is for the oboe book. Um, I was trying to figure out, I was nearing the end of that book and I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do the text for the end of the book because while in the whole book, the, the main character has been interrupting everyone else with her boobs, right? But eventually she gets outdone by good old little Carol here who plays the tuba and with, she gets outdone by the whomps. And I couldn't figure out how to do, I wanted to do the text until I did the sketchbook page. And I just took like a Chinese like painting brush and a lot of different colors and I just did that. And I was like, oh my God, that looks amazing. So I was like, I'll just do that for the book. So then that's what I ended up doing. And I love the way that it came out in the end because it's so, it's such a big contrast from the booms in the book. And I love this O, like this is the best O I'm ever gonna paint in my entire life. And it's okay, it's perfect, it's at the center of the page. So that's how that came about, but back to Lemonade. So here's some more sketches and she's, she's starting to come together. Like she's starting to look like how she looks in the final book. Um, I have some other sketches too over here that I did. Like this is when I was really starting to figure out how I wanted her to look. Like this is sort of what I based her off of in the book. And these are watercolor and with color pencil. Here it is again, the legs. I still didn't know what color I wanted to make them. Like look at how weird they are as like orange. Um, and then here's some more of the kids, different kids, and her. See, look, these legs, they're like kneeling and it looks, it makes me so uncomfortable. Like, I feel like they would look so funny if there were fishnet tights on them. But of course, this is a children's book, so that's not happening. Um, and then here's the different expressions. Look at it, it's so smug, it's poking its little tongue out. And so here's some early sketches of the fishermen. Then some different people. We got a bear in a tube. Oh my God, I love this drawing. And a mermaid on an alligator. There's different mermaids. And then 
then here I'm still figuring out text. This is just some more sketches. These are also in pen. Are these in pencil? These are still in color pencil because I, st I just don't like pencil. Trying to figure her out. These are loose sketches for other project. And here, he's still got legs. They'll get, they'll be gone soon. <laughs> they're, they're so weird looking at it now. I mean, it's funny, but it's weird. Um, and this, I'm so proud of this for some reason. So I, I had leftover acrylic and I painted over like a cereal box and then I cut it out and then I drew little stalks on it. I was like, oh my God. They're trees and I just, I love the texture on them. And I don't know, one day I'll use something like this, but it just like reminds me of like Eric Carle, or like Ogemura. Um, and I, I just love that feeling, but it didn't end up making it to the book. Um, here's some more sketches of mermaids because we love mermaids and the fishermen. And then I was having some fun just doing some like different plants and like trees, rocks. Um, these were done with this pencil which is a Koinor Hard Myth Progresso Magic pencil. My mom got it for me like eight years ago and I never used it. So I was like, ew, it's like for kids. I don't like the way it looks. But then I started drawing with it and I was like, oh my God, this is a lot of fun. It comes out really freaking cool. Um, I don't think I ended up using it in the book, maybe just in some small areas, but I'm hoping to be able to use it in uh, future books. And so here, this is a sketch of of uh, the brown stones. I think this is in bed -Stuy. And because I wanted um, the part that was set in the town to be sort of like downtown, like Brooklyn vibes. So like brownstone vibes. Um, I went to, I went on like a bike ride with my partner through bed -Stuy and through Prospect Park area and like Park Slope and took a lot of photos. And so this is a sketch from one of the photos that you can kind of tell how the final um, town ends up looking like. And so here's some more sketches. Here's some stand ideas. We've got like a double decker stand with like one of the kids underneath, which didn't make it in. Um, some more plants, plants, stands, rat on a raft that didn't make it in, and the sidewalk, which is very important. And this is one of the early, um, early watercolor sketches I did of kind of like how I thought it might look, and you can see the legs. Um, I remember this is one of the sketches like um, my agent saw and she really liked it. And here it is, look, he's poking out his tongue. Oh, he's so smart. And yeah, now she's really coming together. You can really tell her attitude in these sketches. Like she's a little entrepreneur. She's ready, she's ready to take on the day. And then some more Pascas, Pasca lettering this time, trying to figure out um, lettering for this book. And so this actually ended up making it in. The green actually did something for once. And that ended up being the title page. It began with lemonade. Oh, and also the spine. And then here are some more sketches of stands. The early sketch of the stand with the big jug at the top and the hose. Here she is, oh my god, force of nature. Um, some more exploration just with watercolor, color pencil. Um, this was a, since I did my first book in Procreate, I was so nervous to start the art for this book because um, I hadn't painted in a long, long time and I hadn't painted a whole book before. So I did a lot of um, like little sketches. So like here's one of the early sketches I did to kind of see how I wanted the book to look and like what kind of paper I wanted to use. This ended up being a Fabriano hot press paper at 140 pounds, watercolor paper, since it could take like the pencil and the watercolor really well. I still like this sketch, like, <laughs> look at her. <laughs> and then here's another sketch I did as well, figuring out the way that the book would look. I remember I sent this to my publisher to let them know then I knew what I was doing and everything was gonna be okay. So here are some more animal sketches, monkeys, and a frog. Like I've gotten a lot better at drawing frogs. This is a very creepy frog. Um, I was also obsessed with like fish with legs for the longest time. Um, more monkey, an otter I think. And then I'm working out sketches. This is, these are the first thumbnails I did for the final, one of the final pages, which is here. 
And this page took so freaking long for me to figure out. Like, I think the procreate time for it is like 20 hours or something, because I just couldn't figure it out because there were so many things I wanted to fit in. And some more animals, and here she is for a brief while. I was like, maybe I'll do the book in color pencil, but obviously it didn't end up working out that way. Um, sketch of me with Trader Joe's jerk plantain chips that I never had again since then. And then I think that's it. These are sketches for a comic I did. And here's just some more. This is just exploration unrelated to anything. I was playing around with gouache that I got and color pencils. I still like these. Has just some notes and I think that's it. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. So let me know if you would like to see more of my other sketchbooks. I can't promise they're gonna be as fun as these two, but let me know. And thank you so much for watching. And if you liked it, like and subscribe and go buy my books if you wanna read them.